Hi, I'm Robin Forster, and thank you very much for joining us. This is Feel So Alive Informed. And before I introduce you to our guest, who I'm very excited to share with you today, just want to tell you a little bit about me and how this is going to go. Um, I am, um, my intention is to share as much information with, as possible, and I curate it so that you don't have to do all the waiting through trying to figure stuff out. And I've realized during this time period that we're in, that's a little uh, wonky to say it nicely, that healing is really, really important and more important than normal, uh, put it in the, the category of self-care. So let me introduce to you, and I'll just tell you a little bit about her real briefly, and then she's going to tell us more about herself. Oh, and uh, to let you know, I'll probably be looking down because I have notes and I have questions, and I don't want to miss anything because this is going to be so fun. So my guest today is Lada Coral, and she is a channel, an intuitive, and a Reiki master, and so much more than just that. So Lada, why don't you get started telling us a little bit about yourself, and then if you could tell us a little bit about how you got brought into and drawn to the path that you're on now. Awesome. Well, hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Robin, for having me on this wonderful call. I'm so excited to be here and support what you're doing. And uh, well, you know, my story starts back in the Soviet Union. I was born in Moscow. Now it's Russia. And we came to the U.S. in 1990, but we left in 89. So that's technically before the Soviet Union collapsed. So it was quite a change from Moscow, Russia. We ended up um, in Tulsa, Oklahoma in a community generously, lovingly sponsored our family and a few others. So you can imagine that was a really interesting start to our journey in the US. And I had a great time. I was a 10 year old kid. I absolutely loved it, loved the States. I love the freedom here that you can have. Soviet Union was very, very different. Um, so what's neat is we were able to bring my grandmother over in 91 a year after and i say that because my grandma's been a really big part of my life and who i am i ended up moving in with her when i was 11 years old to help with family dynamics and then she just passed away about three and a half years ago at a very young age of 98 years old and i got to take her through all of that journey so toward the end i was her caregiver so I definitely have that loving healing streak in me for sure. And I wasn't going to give her, my grandma to the, to the system here. So she actually ended up being at home with us the entire time. And I was the one who managed all of her running around and medical appointments. And I took her all the way to the very, very end. So I'm very proud for what I could have done for her. So that's a big part of my life. And, um, you know, by day, I'm a graphic designer. <laughs> By night, I'm a healer. Well, I guess by day too. And what got me started on that journey is one of the first times that I went back to Russia because I asked my mom, hey, I want to go see my homeland. And I wanted to see my father. So she said, okay, let's go take a trip to Russia. And I was like, oh, awesome. I get to check out where I'm from and see if I can remember it. We had a great time. And I was hanging out with a with an extended family member. And one day she said, come, 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 come. You like yoga and Tai Chi and all that stuff. You're going to love this Reiki thing. And we're like, okay, no idea what. Two hours through Moscow traffic, we find ourselves on a chair getting a Reiki attunement. So for those of you who may not know, Reiki is a Japanese hands-on healing modality. It was uh, started a little over 100 years ago. Um, so it was wonderful. We had a great time. We got this beautiful Reiki attunement. We, we didn't actually know what we were getting into. We felt amazing. We felt powerful. Grand. We got home. We started researching what we got. <laughs> <laughs> and what we got ended up being a life path for us. So this healing modality that the universe just kind of plopped us in a chair and gave us one random morning in Moscow ended up being the backbone of what I do as a healer. And everything else that I've done in a way... Uh, sits on that foundation of the hands-on healing work but then we went further 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 and I started really getting into it we started uh, we actually had a school um, another cool thing about me uh, my mom and I work together in the healing arts so we're a power team and uh, 
she and I started a Reiki school. We started attuning other people into the Reiki modality, which you can heal yourself with it or you could heal others, but you don't have to be altruistic. You can just work with yourself. It's okay. Um, and then I, I just kept learning and learning through other modalities until today, I could say that I have um, a tripod of modalities. I do Reiki, I do channeling, which is just connecting to source and hearing what, hearing it through words. Um, I have that really cool ability and uh, what's called theta healing. So, but anyway, you could ask me about that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it's, it's been a really fun, wacky, wild journey. And I'm just, I'm, I'm amazed at the life that I have now and how fun it is and magical it is. Neat. Okay. There, and there's so many questions popping up and, and you and I know each other. We're both in Eugene, Oregon, because some of the folks that I've interviewed have been all over the United States. And, and so we get to see each other and you've shared with me networking groups that I didn't know about that turned out to be just awesome with incredible people in them. Uh, and so I'm trying to figure out which rabbit hole to go down. But why don't you, why don't you tell us what some of the benefits are of the healing modalities? Because you do, you have like this whole purse full of ways to help people feel better. What are some of the benefits and then and, and then if you could go from there into, because we have a lot of small business owners watching, how they can use this in business. I mean, I know we're, they were focusing on healing, but I'm just thinking that you're a businesswoman, that that might be kind of a nice little rabbit hole to go down just for a minute or two. Absolutely. That sounds good. And there are, of course, two questions in there. So I think the first one is... What, what are the benefits? So I started this healing journey for myself because caregiving is incredibly stressful and caring for somebody who has multiple diagnoses uh, needs a lot of TLC, um, about 16 years of full on caregiving. Um, I needed a way to de-stress and actually detox because caregiving for family members, sometimes even harder than caregiving for somebody else. So for me, all of these modalities gave me an opportunity to, first of all, have a mandatory timeout from what I was doing. And I would recommend that if you've got kids, if you've got a spouse, if you've got maybe elderly or someone else that you're taking care of, there's a concept that I would like to share with you guys, and that's a self non-negotiable. There are non-negotiables that are going to keep us going throughout the hard, day, the hard days, weeks, months, sometimes years. My grandma lived to 98. That's a very long time. That was not in my plan at the, at the get-go to be a caregiver for so long. So this non-negotiable for me was finding time, space, and a modality that works for me to de-stress, decompress, and some people can can meditate, great. Some people may do uh, maybe prayer. That's wonderful. I would say anything that works for you, but my most important thing I'd love to share with you guys is find the time, make it absolutely non-negotiable. It can be morning, it can be evening, it can be afternoon. The time can even shift from, from day to day. Just fit it in. That self-care and that time out for yourself, in my opinion, is absolutely critical. I use Reiki also to run the energy for me. I was a terrible meditator before I finally hit Reiki. Oh my goodness. You give me even one thing to think about. I'm a multitasker. 10 thoughts are running through my brain at the same time. Because I could feel the energy running through the body um, more and more so, the more I practiced, the more it became a focal point for me. So to me, it was wonderful. One of the benefits of just Reiki for self-care is the emotional component. It just clears them out. My favorite uh, online guru is uh, Panash Desai, and he always says, emotions are energies in motion. That's why they're emotions. So when you're experiencing emotions, know that they're fleeting. They're going to move through. You got to give them the time and the space to move through. And in a way, Reiki is what helps me do that. It gives me time, space, and I allow myself to feel whatever it is that I need to feel. And then after that, they are gone. They are moved out. I have processed them. I have cleared them 
Reiki helps that process tremendously. I have people coming over to me for sessions just when they get completely overwhelmed with life. And in about an hour, what we can do is probably a week's worth of clearing just with a modality like that. And the other benefit of, um, of what I do is once, I, once you know Reiki, you can benefit anyone in your household. You don't have to make a business out of it, but you have dogs, you have cats, you have a plant, you have yourself, you have friends, mothers, brothers, sisters. If they all need a little bit of help, you have an extra wonderful pizzazz in your own hands right here that is so loving, so powerful that people are going to come to you when they need you and you're going to be able to offer so much more. So mental, emotional, uh, de-stressing component. And then for those who like to go into the more spiritual realm, realm um, it's a wonderful modality to ask questions and get answer, uh, insights and answers through of your own higher self. Let's say people are stuck, COVID's here, what do I do? How do I navigate this? I'm also a business owner. I, I have three Schedule Cs that I work with, and there have been days when I just felt completely stuck. One of my projects uh, got canceled. It's a big uh, event that I run and manage. So I had to do some deep soul searchings. But when you find that time to quiet down and really sit with yourself, run through the emotions, understand what, where they're coming from, take the time. There's a lot of beautiful information that comes from that. There's a lot of inner guidance that comes through. So that's just one of the things that I work with. <laughs> I, I know, and it's so hard to only keep this to 10 minutes because there's know. so many things that we want to talk about. But but given that you've been kind enough to give us your time, and I know you have other commitments, I'm wondering what is one or two gifts or techniques or tips that you can pass on to those folks who are watching now? Um, and we have to be kind of brief about it. Absolutely. Well, one of the things is what are your non-negotiables? What are your non-negotiables in life that if you consistently give away or give up, really make your life extremely challenging. And write them down. I'm serious. Write them down. Write them out and then figure out how to wrap your life around your own non-negotiables. Because if, if you can't handle life, you're no good for anyone, including yourself. And again, coming from a place of a caregiver, someone who had to be there for someone, even in the middle of the night, there, there were days where... I had to really get clear with myself. What do, I, what do I have to do to still be there for her day in and day out? So that idea of non-negotiables, for me, it was a big part of it was getting enough sleep when I needed it, as much as I needed it. And I finally had to let go of the fact that I'm not a morning person. Sorry, Robin, I know you're like the best morning person ever. I'm a night owl. I embraced it. <laughs> I <know> and <laughs> I ended up hiring help for her for early mornings so I can get my sleep and get my circadian rhythm in a place where I can be there for the rest of the day. I would rather hang with her till 2, 3 a.m. if I have to. But those morning hours for me personally didn't do well. That was one of those non-negotiables. Another non-negotiable for me, I start my day with a green smoothie. It's just what I do, even if I'm traveling. I can pretty much figure it out. So I think that a lot of us allow other people to walk all over us a little bit too much. You know who I'm talking about, some of you out there watching. And you can do that for a short amount of time, but eventually find those non-negotiables and wrap your way around those in a way that you still take care of yourselves. Again, coming from someone who's had multiple burnouts, as well. It was when I put those two or three things in place that everything made sense. And it was very frustrating and challenging. It broke my habits. It broke my habits of um, being there for people when I really wanted to be. But I would say that's my tip for you guys. What are your non-negotiables in life? Like big stuff. I would just say pick one, work with that. Maybe another one pops out work around that but these are big life changes that are going to have to happen not this is i'm not talking about a manicure or pedicure once a week yeah a lot of awesome thank you so very much yes. this has been wonderful <laughs> well thanks for having me robin